Yeah, I'm, I'm really actually excited to start talking. No fear. Guys, welcome back to 123D. We spent a bunch of time showing you guys how to set up your planes. Michael and I are going to take you through basic maneuvers now. Uh, I'm going to take the, the plane here, and uh, Michael's going to grab the remote, and we're actually going to do something we don't think anybody's ever done before. We're going to walk you through these maneuvers uh, basically one step at a time with the radio and the plane here. Standing still, we're going to show you here in the studio what everything looks like while we intercut the flight footage to get you guys going. So um, without further ado, let's do some of this. Very simple. What we do is we deflect the rudder and add a little bit of power so the plane flies in a slightly upward configuration. So if I want to roll right, I put left rudder. And if I, my first move is that. If I want to roll to the other side, if I want to roll left, the first move is right rudder. Depending on how fast you're flying, you don't need as much rudder. And depending on how high of an angle of attack, that's what determines exactly how much um, power you need. And initiate the roll, and as it rolls, we're going we're gonna to add our rudder and stop, okay? And we're going to hold it. And then we'd be uh, using the throttle to determine our altitude. Now we're going to enter into a Harrier, the absolute foundation maneuver for 3D. We are going to slow the plane down until it wants to stall. We're going to pull the nose up, and we're going to add some elevator, and we're going to hang on the prop. And this is going to be a delicate combination of elevator and throttle. So i am stalled the aircraft now, and I'm adding full elevator. Now I'm going to start decreasing and increasing the throttle as I need it. Now I've pretty much locked it in. I've got the exact right amount of um, elevator and the right amount of throttle. It changes with the wind direction, changes with everything. But you can see, I can control its altitude very, very easily. I can also control the, the angle of attack very easily. The more you're relying on the prop and the less the wings are doing until finally when you get up into a hover, which of course is a big part of 3D flying, wings don't have anything to do with it. You are all just completely hanging on the power of the Right aileron and left rudder. Roll it. Okay, we're at point one. Now, as we're rolling back to point two, the uh, aileron is going to stay, but I'm going to release the rudder. And I might add a little bit of up elevator to make sure it, the nose doesn't dip. Now, as we roll again, I'm going to switch to the right rudder and drop the elevator to normal. See, I have a little bit of right rudder. Now, as we're, as we're rolling again, I am going to release the rudder completely to keep it straight and let the plane fly normally. With 3D, it's very important that we understand how to make the plane fly straight as it's going completely through a roll. If you can roll the plane slow, you can do just about anything because that means you have complete control over the aircraft at every possible attitude. It seems to be the maneuver everybody wants to learn how to do, which is a rolling harrier. It is unfortunately a really advanced maneuver. It's something that you have to practice, practice, practice. I'm going to show you how to practice it and how to become proficient at it and how to bring it down low. So let's give it a shot. Here I'm doing it with my very big 40% aircraft. You can see how the surfaces are a bit more exaggerated. Well, here it is in very slow motion. You can see the rudder going from left to center to right to center. And then you'll see the elevator go from up elevator to down elevator alternately and relax to the center in between. You'll see I'm also pumping the throttle quite a bit. 
Uh, this plane right now is very low, so throttle management is critically important. As you start and you're high up, you can get away with just rudder. As you start getting lower, you'll start to have that elevator, and then of course, when you get really low, throttle becomes very important to add to this mix. Okay, we're going to demonstrate the throttle management. As you can hear, the throttle is constantly moving to maintain good altitude. Here is position one, quarter roll. Full right aileron, full left rudder. Position two is a little bit of up elevator and no rudder. Position three is full right aileron, full right rudder. Position four is no rudder and a little bit of up elevator. This is a TikTok Harrier roll. It's very, very difficult. It's hard enough to go in one direction, but to reverse it takes a lot of practice. Um, Here is the radio in very slow motion. As you can see, I'm starting with ailerons in one direction, making the rolls, and then shifting them quickly to the other direction, and reversing the sequence of the rudders. Again, being very vigilant with the throttle control. I'm going to teach you how to transition into a hover properly. Most people want to just fly straight, point the nose up and catch it. And I'm going to show you why that is not the best way to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to do the Harrier maneuver we discussed earlier. We're going to set it up at a high alpha Harrier. And then I'm going to gradually add throttle and elevator and stand it up in position. That way you can control its altitude and you can stand it up down in front of you rather than having to do everything at, you know, 50 feet for safety. Absolutely the biggest mistake everyone makes when they're trying to hover is they over control. Two keys for hovering. One is really good throttle control. Number two is anticipation and small stick movement. Here we're going to do a Harrier. Throttle management is absolutely everything here. And then we're going to slowly pull it up until it starts to hover. Here we're going to show you a hover. What we're doing is we're going to stand it up here in a hover and we're going to zoom in onto the tail section. This is something that isn't done very often. We're going to try and show you just how little input is being made. You can see it's windy and the plane is being thrown around quite heavily. But I'm still not doing that much. The next maneuver we're going to learn is a, a torque roll. This can be done by literally just getting into a really nice, very straight hover and then letting it naturally roll using the torque of the motor. However, sometimes you have to help it along by giving it a little uh, left aileron. I'm going to try and show you a torque roll and how little movement you should have. Definitely changes every single time though. We're going to let it just torque roll. Now it's doing its own thing. It's turning as fast as it wants. It's got a wind, so it's a little difficult. I'm going to try and just keep the surfaces level and just help uh, kick it and steer it. As you can see here, I'm inputting, but I'm trying as hard as I can to keep it as straight as I can so I can effectively reduce the amount of input. 
This maneuver uh, that I'm going to show you now is a maneuver that uh, a lot of people have been asking me over the years to show them how it's done. Uh, basically, I get down into an inverted harrier and then I do a quick snap flip that brings the plane back into that inverted harrier configuration. We put it inverted and then we're going to snap flip. This maneuver looks awesome right above the deck. You just have to be very careful to watch your throttle management. Here it is in slow motion. I'm basically putting the sticks to the upper corners and instigating a snap roll. It's just a little exaggerating. I'm adding some throttle with it and cutting the throttle real quickly to stop it again when I get inverted. As with most others, it's really just a lot of feel and practice. Here's another maneuver everyone likes. It's uh, it's a, a, a quick turn. It's a little windy here, so so it's kind of bobbing up and down. Here to stick movements in slow motion. That's quick to inverted. Now we're going to do another quick flip to normal. There you go. Now it's flying normal again. As you can see on the fingers, it's very quick. Flip to inverted, flip to upright. Okay, now we're going to do a move that everybody likes. It's called the pop top, high energy maneuver. Go straight up. That's a pop top. Conversely, this is the same maneuver. This is called a crankshaft. Same stick movement. This is obviously on a horizontal plane. The stick movements start with the full left aileron to the upper left corner and then leveling it off to the middle with just full elevator. Rudder rent to full right with no throttle and throttle starts coming up as you relax the elevator to the center. Here's where we go full left aileron and full throttle. Then we move the right stick up to the corner and add full rudder. This is where we flatten the ailerons and go to full down elevator. Here we simply relax the rudder and then eventually relax the elevator to center. This is one of the, uh, we, we like to call it a tumbling maneuver, although it is a 3D maneuver. It's called a waterfall. And what this consists of is I'm going to push Pull down elevator, the plane is going to flop over rather quickly, yeah, there you go, and land like that, and then I'm going to release the, uh, the elevator a little bit, and it's going to float in the inverted configuration. And of course, we can keep repeating it. We're going to demonstrate it live, so here we go. We're going to push it hard, throw it over, and we're going to catch it with some throttle. We're going to go up and over, and have it right now, held in an inverted uh, descent. The other version of it is a waterfall that continues to flip. So we're going to go over, we'll go over again, over again, push over the top, and just hold and add a little power back to stabilize the inverted ball. Now we're going to try a knife edge spin. We're going to throw the plane over the top, add a little rudder, and we're going to spin on our knife edge.
This is just full down elevator and a little bit of rudder to level it off and it just keeps on spinning with the right airplane. This is another move that's pretty simple. We're just pushing straight over the top like a waterfall, tilt it on its side, add some rudder and full throttle and let it spin. Unfortunately, most planes get in to this maneuver a little differently. So there is a bit of feel involved in practice. We're gonna do a flat spin. And how the flat spin works is we're gonna throw the plane over inverted by pushing hard on the elevator. Once it gets inverted, we're gonna hit rudder. And then the plane is gonna start rotating that way. And I'm gonna relax the elevator and add throttle in order to get the plane to stay on that axis. Rudder and a little bit of left aileron, and now she's flat spinning, and just adding some throttle to level it off. With the right airplane, and with good control, you can actually control this maneuver to become very precise. There's a flat spin, I'm gonna add some rudder, and then aileron to get it started, and now I'm adding power to level it off. This is a four point roll. All I'm doing is going left rudder with right aileron, middle with the rudder, and then moving to the right rudder with the same aileron and back to center. It's actually pretty simple. Although it might be a little simple, it still takes a whole lot of practice. The trick is to just get the aileron over and back to center and have it very deliberate and well-timed so it looks good. Now we're going to do a blender. We might start it with a little stall turn. On the way down, we're going to get a little aileron, accelerate, add some butter, this is a simple maneuver. It just requires full aileron and then accelerate. Then you're going to add some rudder to make it spiral and then relax everything to flatten it out. In this case, we flattened it out to inverted. Bottom line, this hobby is about having fun and trying new things. I've shown you the stick movements, you can play them back a few times, but ultimately it is a lot of practice and feel that's going to make you successful at this hobby. Every maneuver I've showed you is very doable, and again, it just takes a little bit of practice. But once you get it, you're really going to find that 3D flying is very enjoyable. My ultimate hope is that I can get a few of you watching this series that have never tried 3D flying to give it a try. I think you'll be really glad you did. Oh, <laughs> missed it by that much.